Hello, Waltz. Good morning. My name is Glenda Smith, and on behalf of the Federal Women's Institute of Ontario and the Earl Lee Museum, I welcome you to this little workshop on making a house log. I don't know whether any of you know the country music song called Hello, Walls. Well, in a way, a house log's just a little bit like that. The walls are telling their story. A house log is the life of a house. You make it the life of a home. So, pause for a minute and think about your own home. What do you really know about it? For example, do you know where the shut off to the water for the outside tap is? Do you know when the roof was last shingled? Who did it and what kind of shingles they had put on and what it cost? Did you know the answer to these questions? If so, good for you. Most people do not know. So that's a good example of why you should keep a house log. It's information like this that you need to have on hand and all in one place. So we lived in a home for 53 years. And when we listed the house, I put the log, uh, my house log out on the table for an open house. And I also showed it to the real estate agent. And they thought it was just wonderful. And I really believed that what was in that house log helped to sell the house. People realized they had all the information they would need right there at hand. And when we did sell, the new owner asked if he could keep it. Well, of course, that's the purpose of a house log. You would leave it with the house. So um, making a house log is well worthwhile. So a house log can be as simple as recording daily events like we replaced the dishwasher 15 years ago. It was replaced on October 18, 2021. It was a Frigidaire. It cost $1,598.54 and we purchased a three-year warranty. It's a really good idea to put all of this in your house log. You need the bill of sale, the warranty, everything. It's right at your fingertips. And in a few years time, when it comes time to replace it, you'll be able to go back and think, oh, we just spent that on the refrigerator then? Look at what we have to spend now. So a house log can be as simple as recording everyday events, or it can be very elaborate you could even become a writer, a photographer, or an artist and make a house log worthy of being called a masterpiece. I took the middle of the road, so it's simple in some ways, but I think pretty good in others. So, where do you start? Well, you decide on the type of book you want to make. It can be as simple as a notebook. It can be a three-ring binder. And some people just keep them in the banker box uh, in file folders arranged by topic and date. That's okay, but not as effective as a three grain binder. The one I made, which I mentioned left at the home we sold, was the three ring binder. And I got my husband to make a plywood uh, cover for it, both front and back. And on the front, I put a picture of the house as it was when I started the house log. And on the back, I put a picture of the oldest picture of the house that I could find, which was getting pretty old at that time. And then I just shellacked the cover and it stayed, it was really good. So a three ring binder allows for maps, documents, and pictures to be added as you find them. So for example, because we now live in a new home, I was able to get modern up-to-date pictures but for example, I have the picture of what our house looks like now. So when, when and ever we have to make any changes, we'll know what the original was and have it for other people to see later on. Also have the layout of the inside of the house. And this is really a good idea. Even if you don't have an original like this, you can draw the inside of your home. So. You have decided on the type of book you're going to make. And for our workshop, let's say we're going to go to the elaborate stage. We're going to go for a catalog. And remember, a house book is never finished. You just continually work on it. Um, you put something in today, something another day. You find something all of a sudden, and, oh, this would be perfect for a house log. 
you really do need to divide your house log into three sections. The history of the house, general information, and family life. So again, keep in mind a house log is not a half day job. This is an ongoing project and a lot of research may be required. Of course, you would not do all the history and then do the general, but you would work on each section at different times. So, under the history of the house, I think these are the topics that you might want to include. So you might want to put the legal description, the date the house was built, the style of house, changes from the original, former residence, and you may think of other topics that you'd like to include too. So, where do we go from here and where do we find all of this information? Well, the legal description of your house, you can start with your tax bill, the deed, the assessment notice that you get once a year. These will all give you the legal description. A builder often puts the date on the house somewhere, like on a cornerstone or above a garage, but it's not always there. So this is where you may have to do some research. The registry office is a good place to visit, or a library. An older neighbor is often very helpful. And there's old census forms that you can find in libraries. There's the Ontario Genealogy Society, your local historical society. And if you're fortunate enough to have a Women's Institute in your area, they probably made a Tweetsmere history book and they may well have a whole write-up of your home there. Good place to start to look. So we talk about the style of house. Um, a lot of people are really good at saying, oh, that house, I know it was uh, 1940s because of the design. I'm afraid I'm not one to be able to pick out the design of a house, but it's something that you could research and find out the uh, style of your home if you don't know. The changes from the original are really important. So if you have had, say, a door framed in and moved to a different area, or if you've added a porch, or inside if you've had a partition knocked down and you've changed it around in some way, make sure all those things are recorded in your book. It's all history and it's all important. Then you go to the general information. This is the most important and useful part of your book. It is where you turn to when anything goes wrong. So here you need to have a different page for each item. Uh, that way there's room to put in uh, updates. So for example, you should have a page on the roof, the water system, the furnace, and so on. So for example, let's take a look at the roof. What type of roof is it? Is it asphalt single? Is it a steel roof? If it's shingle, for example, what kind? What color? Who put them on? Was there a guarantee with them? And if possible, put in the cost. If you see a problem with your roof, if you think there's a shingle lifting or whatever in the wind, you can always go back and say, that was just put on five years ago. This should be under warranty. And if you put the name of the person who put the roof on in the first place, it's easy enough to contact that person and hopefully get your roof fixed up. If on the other hand, a, year, a few years down the road you think, I wonder when that roof was really put on last. The roof lasts maybe 15, 20 years, so I should look back and see. Maybe we better start saving for a new roof. All that's right there in your house log. The water system. Are you on a well or a town water system? If it's a well, is it a drilled well or a dug well? How deep is it? Where is it in relation to the house? This is a good thing to put on your map. What I mean by the map is take so many yards outside of your actual home and uh, make that your map so that you can put your septic system, your well, all your shrubs and name them. That's your map. So you want to mark where the uh, septic system is, if you're on a septic system, as I say. Good idea just to put it in actual numbers of feet because particularly come winter you have a problem and you have to go digging. It's a good idea to know exactly where to start. Where is the shutoff for the inside of the house? Is there a water softener? Where is the hot water tank? And is the hot water tank electric 
or is it run by gas? So everything connected to water should be recorded so you know exactly where to look if there's a problem. Then we might go to the furnace next and you ask all the same questions. Where, when, make, year, type. And a really good thing to put here is the phone number of the person who did the latest repairs on the furnace. And then when something happens, you get up a cold winter morning and the furnace is not going, you know exactly where to go to find the number to phone and get a repairman out quickly. You need to keep a record of the maintenance. You need to mark down when the filters were changed and what type of filter they are. Are they washable or you have to throw them away and get brand new ones? The septic system. If you live in the country, you're on a septic system. Even some of the newer subdivisions still have septic systems. So make sure you know which one you have and where it is on the property when it was last cleaned out. And even if you're on a town system, you need to know where the shutoff is to your home. In your house log, you can record such things as fire alarms, smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors. Where are they? When were they last checked? And how old are they? They should really be replaced about every 10 years. Something a lot of people don't realize. Most insurance companies ask that you take a picture of all your appliances. If you've done this, that's a big help towards making your house log. The insurance wants this in case there's a fire so they know exactly what content you had. But here you have a picture of everything and you just need to add the information, like the models, the year, when it was purchased, and if possible, the bill of sales. So just put in as much detail as you can, but the more you put in, the more useful your book is going to be. So now let's look at the section on family life. Certainly, if you've not included a lot of changes to the house before in the history, now's the time to do it. Before and after pictures are always good. Like, remember when the window was over in that corner and it's not there any longer? And I have to give an example. My adult children still laugh about the time that our kitchen was painted pink. And they will ask, so mom, when was that? Well, it was recorded in the house log and went with the house. Pictures, dates, and captions are all good for this section of the book. Your amount of interest in recording the history of the house is your guide. Another good reason to use a three ring book is that if and when you sell your house and you don't really want all those family pictures that have been telling history, but you really don't want them to go to the new owner, you can take them out very easily. So I hope you see the importance of a house log and at the same time see the challenging project that lies ahead. Make it your winter project. Thank you. Hello, Waltz. Hello, hello. I think